Oceans cover 70% of our planet and are essential to our survival, but we often underestimate the importance and variety of the underwater environment. Well, with me is Julia Martin Lefebvre, IUCN's Director General, to explain more. Julia, what are the major threats to biodiversity in our seas? So, Nikki, I think I'll talk to you about five major threats. Probably there are more, but let's talk about five. First of all, unsustainable fishing, that is destructive fishing practices, trawling, illegal fishing, overfishing, are really causing a threat to our, our biodiversity in the oceans. Now there is some there's some good signs. We're starting to work with a couple of businesses, for example the Spanish Fishing Trade Organization and the Southern Indian Ocean Deep Sea Fishers Association to try to understand together how we can stop these unsustainable fishing pr uh, practices. Another problem for marine biodiversity is, of course, ocean acidification. This means that it's the increasing acidity of the ocean due to the greater absorption of CO2 emissions, which and this has increased by 30% since the Industrial Revolution, and, and I'm afraid it's going to increase more. So this is a, a really big problem. Sea surface temperatures have increased something like 0.67% centigrade since the last century. And this is already seriously affecting the marine ecosystem. IUCN has been working on a survey of climate change impacts in the Southwest Indian Ocean. The results of the survey expected soon are expected to reveal very severe coral bleaching in that region, and this is serious, and we're working on providing policy advice about how to, how to avoid this. Another, another stress on biodiversity and on, on the ocean ecosystems is, of course, comes from extractive industries, and the Deepwater Horizon tragedy has highlighted the growing threat of deep water extraction of crude oil and gas, especially as these activities are spread into much more vulnerable areas such as the Arctic. So as we know, land-based mineral resources are going to be scarcer and scarcer, and therefore this sort of exploration will take off, unfortunately, and IUCN has now called for a moratorium on new oil exploration and extraction in vulnerable and sensitive environments, at least until our knowledge base is improved. And this is very important for us to stop and think, and we're helping nations come to terms with the new legal frameworks and a better understanding about these issues. So the extractive industries issues is really a, a major threat. Pollution from agricultural sources and wastewater is giving rise to dead zones in the oceans, some of which are as large as small countries. So this is really a very important threat to the environment, which needs to be better understood and stopped. Invasive species, such as, for example, jellyfish in the Mediterranean, have significant ecological, economic, and health impacts, which include, in some cases, the collapse of the fishing industry. The health impacts, for example, are the spread of pathogens such as cholera, which are carried around in ships' ballast waters. And this, this is another issue that really needs to be addressed urgently. And IUCN is working very hard on this poorly understood threat to the ocean ecosystems. How valuable is the biodiversity that lies within our oceans? So the biodiversity in our oceans is more valuable than we can imagine. Various attempts have been made to quantify the contribution of oceans to the world's economy. For example, coastal and marine ecosystem goods and services were estimated in a serious study to be about US $12.6 trillion annually. That's huge. But the basic truth is that without a functioning ocean ecosystem to regulate our climate, to absorb carbon and to provide food and other resources to billions of poor people around the world, our ability to survive as a species would be severely compromised. And it's maybe difficult to even put a, an amount of money on this. So what is IUCN doing to protect the ocean from some of the threats that you mentioned? So IUCN works with a huge number of partners, governments, private sector, the UN, and with all of our members in order to reduce the impacts and to restore the ecosystems in the world's oceans. Uh, one such collaboration is a relatively new one. It's called the Global Ocean Biodiversity Initiative, GOBI. And IUCN, through GOBI, is leading a coalition of scientific partners to advance a scientific basis for conserving biodiversity in the deep sea areas. 
We're also collaborating with the Global Environment Facility to enhance the understanding and the appreciation of sea mounts or underwater mountains which originate from the ocean floor and with a view to providing guidance as to how to appreciate and value the tremendous service that these sea, sea mounts provide for uh, safe havens for fish and for biodiversity in general. So these are just two examples. We've also formed a very useful bridge, I think, between large industries and the scientific community to mitigate the impacts of industrial activities on vulnerable species and ecosystems. For example, the western gray whales in the Pacific and coral reef communities in Yemen, and also shallow water habitats in the North and the Baltic Sea. So these are examples of the different partnerships and the different ways in which IUCN is using its reach from local to global and its influencing policies and its influencing capacity built on 63 years of serious scientific work. What role can the oceans play in the fight against climate change? IUCN has been a long-term advocate, as you know, on the importance of the role of forests and the value of reducing deforestation as a means of combating climate change. And now the world is really waking up to the fact that there are other, the coastal and marine ecosystems, such as wetlands, mangroves, um, seagrasses, also provide a very, very important and valuable means of removing carbon from the atmosphere. So whether it is through their protection or their restoration, careful management of these ecosystems is absolutely key to reducing the impacts of climate change. Julia Marcelo, thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Nikki.